Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we gather on this feast of all saints. We come here to the altar of the Lord. Let us bring all of our cares, our concerns to the Lord. This morning's Mass will be said for the intentions of Irene and Ray McNamee and Maria Kay. Lord Jesus, you came that we might have life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow upon us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of reconcilia reconciliation for which we earnestly long through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes, and holding palm branches in their hands. 
they cried out in a loud voice. Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, who are these wearing white robes and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure, as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that you may proclaim his worldly gospel in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. 
and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. So here's the question. How do you see things? It might be a question as we face this pandemic. People have different views. So how do you see things? It might be as we approach our election on Tuesday. So how do you see things? It might be more personal. My friend Deacon John Lucas has been struggling with cancer. And after many treatments, the doctors have put things in front of him, some choices to be made. How do you see things? The way we see things is very important. Today in the gospel, we're told that Jesus goes up the mountain. Immediately, the people of old would have understood the mountain is the place where people encounter God. It was true for Moses, true for Abraham, true for Jesus. Even today, many people, they go out west, and when they go up the mountain, there is a connection that they can feel with God. Jesus went up the mountain, and he looked out, and we're told he saw the crowd. Who did he see? Just prior to this passage, we're told that the crowd gathered around Jesus. They were the sick. They were the suffering. They were those who were paralyzed. They were those who were beset by demons, the crowd. Jesus looked out and he saw the crowd. And then we're told he sits down. He's about to speak. But the people of old, they also would have understood. The teacher always sat down before he taught them. Jesus was going to teach them. He was going to teach them about the poor in spirit. We know about being poor in spirit. He was going to teach them about those who are mourning. And we too know about mourning. He was going to teach them about the meek and those who hunger after justice. He was going to teach them about the merciful and those who were clean of heart and those who were peacemakers and those who were persecuted. The eight Beatitudes. Jesus, looking at the crowd, the people who had gathered around him, he spoke to them about those who were blessed. No matter their condition, 
Jesus, as he looked out, he saw that they were blessed because he was speaking from the mountain. He was looking at the people who had gathered through the eyes of God. Not only because he was the Son of God, but because of the love of God that dwelt in him as he looked at his people. It was out of the eyes of love that he looked at all the people who were gathered there and saw that they were blessed. For a very simple reason, it's there in the second reading. He saw them as God's children, no matter their circumstances, and he knew God's love for them and how much God wanted them to live in his love. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. And the saints are the men and women who have gone before us who somehow have been very much alive in God's love. Sometimes when we think of the saints, we think of very holy people or maybe very pious people. And they might have been very holy people or pious people. But what makes a saint a saint is somehow the saints are alive in the love of God. We can sense it ourselves. If you can think of someone in your own life who is a holy person for you, what makes people holy is not how perfect they are, but how much God's love is alive in them. To live in his love. After the Second Vatican Council, one of the revolutionary documents was on the life of the church. And in the fifth chapter of that revolutionary document, it said something that was startling at the time. It said, all people are called to holiness. It might have been earlier that people thought priests should have been holy men. It might have been in earlier times that dedicated religious men and women were expected to be holy people, but that everyone was called to holiness. That was something new and radical, but true that all of us are called to be alive in God's love and to be able to look at ourselves as God's children, to look at our world through the eyes of his love, to be saints in the time that we live in, that is our call. So how do you see things? Through the love of God, in the spirit of his love, we gather at the Eucharist. It is the sharing of God's love that is given to us in this Eucharist. God wants us to receive that love to know that each and every one of us, no matter our circumstances, are indeed blessed. To be alive in that love. It makes all the difference in the way that we see things. Let us profess together the faith that we share. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, with faith and with confidence in God's love, we now bring our prayers and we ask for God's grace. In today's gospel, Jesus teaches us how as Christians we should live our lives. We pray for the insight to listen to, these, to his words and in our own lives to be patient, generous, forgiving, compassionate, and non-judgmental. We pray also that we love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, and bless those who curse us. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our, sure prayer. our prayer. On today, the Feast of All Saints, we remember that those who have lived their lives in the footsteps of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we pray that through following their example, we ourselves may also gain the rewards which the Lord has bestowed on them. We pray to the Lord, the Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have gone before us in faith, especially those of our own families and of our parish, that they may stand with the saints before the throne of the Lamb. We pray to the Lord. And Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to our merciful God that when we ourselves come before him in judgment, we too may be the recipients of his infinite love and be accepted by him into glory with all his holy saints. We pray to the Lord. And Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for healthcare workers throughout the world and particularly in our own country, who at great personal risk and sacrifice are attending to the needs of victims of this devastating global pandemic. We pray that the Lord bless them with safety in their work and reward their personal sacrifices with success in their labors. We pray to the Lord, and Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our nation in this time of discernment, election and transition, May all citizens cast their vote in a spirit of reverence for this right, charity for those who disagree with, and concern for the good of all as we strive for a more perfect and peaceful union. We pray to the Lord. And Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. And Lord, receive all of our prayers. We trust in your mercy and in your love. Help us always to live in that love through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. In 
and may these offerings that we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord. And grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of their immortality, so we too might experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, that heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of brothers and sisters already share in your eternal praise. Toward her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by our faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those who have gone before us in faith. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when is once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on that night of the Last Supper, he took bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. And the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate this memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And by our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son. Confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the bishops, priests, and deacons with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of your Church, looking into the signs of the times through the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. And keep us attentive to the needs of all, sharing their grief and their pain, 
their joy and their hope. May we faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the ways of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the apostles and martyrs and all your saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
and let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and all your wonderful saints, we implore your grace that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we might pass from this pilgrimage table to the banquet of our heavenly home through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord.